हेलो स्टूडेंट्स लास्ट टाइम वी हैव स्टडीड अबाउट वन फैक्टर एट अ टाइम अप्रोच फॉर मीडियम ऑप्टिमाइजेशन एंड द सेकंड पार्ट वी हैव स्टडीड इज फुल फैक्टोरियल डिजाइन वी हैव स्टडीड व्हाट आर द एडवांटेजेस एंड डिसएडवांटेजेस ऑफ वन फैक्टर एट अ टाइम एंड फुल फैक्टोरियल डिजाइन सो द लास्ट पार्ट दैट वी एंड अप विथ of full factorial design was regarding the two types of factors numerical factors and non numerical factors in which we have learned that if the number of factors are more then obviously the number of numerical factors are going to be increased so if the number of factors increases the full factorial design it becomes more and more complicated that means that leads to increase in the number of experiments which may not be possible to perform at laboratory level also therefore to find out a solution for that the solution for that is to take help from statistics statistical approach so in this lecture we'll learn about the statistical approach how exactly it is used for the optimization of medium sequential nature of statistically designed experiments so this is a protocol to be followed in order to optimize the medium the first step now ideally the experimental design is a sequential process first categorical factors are studied to determine which nutrients and physical conditions are of importance for optimizing the fermentation then a large number of continuous factors so in the first step categorical factors means non numerical factors in the second step continuous factors means numerical factors so these continuous factors may be in between a number of 5 to 12 in general are screened and insignificant ones are eliminated in order to obtain a smaller more manageable set of factors so we have learned in full factorial design the limiting factor is the number of factors number of categorical factors and number of continuous factors so if this number is reduced then studying each and every factor in detail is possible so therefore the next step would be to eliminate the insignificant factors insignificant means the factor which does not have a significant effect on the response response means output of an experiment the remaining factors are then optimized means insignificant ones are eliminated and the significant ones so the significant factors are then optimized by response surface methodology or modeling and finally after model building and optimization the predicted optimum is verified and for this verification again one factor at a time approach will be utilized so this this doesn't mean that one factor at a time approach is never useful it is useful when the number of factors are very less so this is the sequence in which how exactly the medium optimization is done briefly the factors are selected then these factors are screened in a statistical design insignificant factors are eliminated and only significant factors which are very few in number are then optimized in using surface 
response surface methodology and again we go back to one factor at a time in order to get a optimized medium so what are these statistical designs these are called as screening designs so the objective of the screening designs is to identify most important factor means most significant factors among a large number of factors so for this these screening designs are used one of the screening designs is described by plaquet and berman these designs are called as plaquet and berman designs the objective of this plaquet and berman's design is to identify the most important variable or the most important factor in the system most important factor means the factor which has significant effect on the response for example in case of vitamin production vitamin concentration will be the response in case of antibiotic fermentation concentration of antibiotic will be the response so the factor which affects the production of vitamin which affects the production of antibiotic or in all which affects the fermentation response that factor will be called as significant factor so plaquet and berman design it consists of two level screening design two level means here level means concentrations of factors so how many concentrations of factors we can test here only two high level and low level high concentration and low concentration so it is in general when more than five independent variables means factors are to be investigated then we need to take help of plaquet and berman's design because more than five independent variables means the number of variables are very high and therefore full factorial design may not be uh, possible experimentation will be more and more laborious therefore we take help from plaquet and berman's design so when the number is more than 5 plaquet and berman design may be used to find out the most important variable in the system which is then optimized in further studies this is the objective of plaquet and berman's design to find out the most important variable in the system most significant variable in the system significant means which has a significant effect on the response means if you change the concentration of that factor from low level to high level it shows an effect on the response now these designs are meant for the study of up to n minus 1 factors with n number of trials so number of trials are more as in comparison to number of factors now this is the property or characteristic of this design uh, earlier sentence that is study of n minus 1 factors with n trials that means if there are seven factors then you need to perform eight trials in order to evaluate the seven factors but this n n must be a multiple of 
that means it should be 8 12 16 20 24 and so on so there are hundreds of designs of placket and berman so if the number of factors is 5 then what design you should choose we can choose a design of 8 because according to the earlier formula n minus 1 with n trials the number of n comes 6 if the factors are 5 the value of n will be 6 trials but 6 trials are not mentioned in Plaquet and Verman design so we should go for next trial that is a set of 8 trials a set of 12 trials and so on these are the typical designs which are frequently used by the researchers 8 trial design 12 trial design 16 trial design 20 and 24 trial designs for the evaluation of more than five factors so the designs are selected closely in multiples of four based on the number of factors that are needed to be evaluated there is a common practice to select a design of 12 trial to test 6 to 8 factors this is in general there may be variation but most of the times the problem is to evaluate 6 to 8 factors and the solution chosen for that is to select a design a 12 trials Plaquet and Berman design now we'll try to understand this with an example let us consider a newly discovered antibiotic from a producer organism and we need to design a production medium for the maximum production of this antibiotic which will be measured in micrograms or milligrams per ml and for example if there are seven factors which are required to be investigated for example if we choose a design of 12 trials placket and verbant design for the evaluation of these seven factors so the choice of factors and factor settings so as i mentioned placket and verbant design is a two level screening design levels means settings levels of factors settings of factors two concentrations of factors so choice of factors and factor settings is based on prior experience while growing the antibiotic producing organism and literature that means the question arises why seven factors so we assume or we collect the information from previous research books and literature and understanding that information collectively we can conclude or we come up with seven factors so based on the previous experience and the literature we can select the important factors so in this example if there are seven factors the choice of the factor settings that means what should be the concentration of these factors now this is a very critical issue in the design of any fermentation medium so we can get the solution of that from the literature or from the previous published work so the choice of factor settings or labels should be much wider so as to produce a change in the response 
that means the concentration of factor should be such that it should have some significant effect on response means the concentration of factor should be low enough to have an effect on antibiotic production the concentration of factor should be high enough to have an effect on antibiotic synthesis or production factors for plaquet and berman design for a new antibiotic fermentation now these are the factor settings this is just an example so in the first column factors are mentioned in the second column factor settings are mentioned sub columns mentions low concentration and high concentration so these low concentrations can be abbreviated as l high concentration as h or some books describe it as minus 1 and plus 1 respectively suppose these are the factors which are identified as uh, important for antibiotic fermentation this is the basic composition or we can say that it is the basal composition of the medium that we gathered the information from literature so the medium should consist of cane molasses and several others so what should be the concentration of cane molasses here so it is selected as 10 mg per ml at low concentration and 40 mg per ml that is we consider as high concentration how do we get these values we predicted these values from the literature from books from research papers so look at the difference 30 the difference is very big and which is to considered to be have a significant effect on antibiotic production likewise other levels are also selected for other factor cotton seed flour it is low 25 high 100 mg per ml constrip liquor it is 5 and 20 mg per ml yeast extract 5 and 20 soybean meal 15 and 60 fish meal 15 and 60 and fso4 5 and 20 this is the general basal composition of fermentation medium which is selected for this new antibiotic fermentation and the task is to identify which of the following factors are significant and in order to resolve this task we are using plaquet and berman's design after factor settings the next step is to select a 12 trial design in this example 12 trial plaquet and berman design is selected for the study of seven factors in new antibiotic fermentation what are the seven factors these are the seven factors so for time being we can see that these factors are abbreviated as 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 let us try and understand this table this is a plaquet and berman design table a 12 trial design first column shows the trials from 1 to 12 trial means the experiments the number of experiments to be conducted and the second column shows factor settings for different factors from 1 to 7 from 1 to 7 these are the factors abbreviated as 1 to 7 now you see that this is a two level screening design so you will find that 
there are only two levels which are mentioned in this table low level is abbreviated as minus 1 for factor 1 and plus 1 is abbreviated as a high level for factor 1 which is true for second factor third factor fourth factor fifth sixth and seventh factors The other characteristics of this design are if you consider factor number 1. So factor number 1 is tested in 12 trials in 12 experiments at low level and at high level. So you can see that out of 12 trials, 6 trials means 50% trials are conducted at low level and 50% trials are conducted at high level. This is true for all the factors. Say for example, factor number 2, you will find that there will be 6 trials out of 12 in which Factor 2 is tested at low level and factor 2, 6 trials in which factor 2 will be tested at high level. This is true for all the factors. So all the factors out of 12, they will be tested. You will, you will find that its level is minus 1 in 6 trials and its level is plus one in the rest of the six trials. So this shows the balance, complete balance in the design. All the factors are tested at two levels. Now, let us consider factor number one and factor number two in columns in relation to the number of trials. This will help us to understand that all the possible combinations of all the factors are tested in this 12 trials. So if we consider factor number 1 and factor number 2, just check out the trials in which factor number 1 is tested at low level. So these trials are trial number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. So these are the trials, 6 trials in which concentration of first factor is low. If you compare these 6 trials with factor number 2, you will find that out of these six trials at which factor number one is at low level, 50% of the trials will be conducted at low level of two and 50% of the trials will be conducted at high level of two like this. So trial number one, 2 and 3. These are the three trials in which factor number 2 is tested at low level and rest of the levels. Trial number, rest of the trials, sorry. Trial number 4, 5 and 6. In these trials, you will find that factor 2 is tested at high level. So, out of 6 trials of factor 1, if you compare that with factor 2, 50% of the trials will have low level of factor 2 and 50% of the trials will have high level of factor 2. This is true for all the columns or all the factors. You can compare factor 1 with factor 3. You can compare 
factor 3 with factor 7 and you will find the same condition. Just for the sake of convenience, let us compare last two factors, factor number 6 and factor number 7. So as I mentioned earlier, you need to mark the trials at which factor number 6 is tested at low level. So these are trial number 1, trial number 4, trial number 6, 7, 9 and 11. So these are the 6 trials where the concentration of factor 6 is low. So out of these 6 trials where concentration of 6 is low, 50% of the trials you will find that factor 7 where the factor 7 will be at low level and in 3 trials you will find that factor 7 will be at high level. So out of these 6 trials where concentration of factor 6 is low, in 3 trials you will find that the concentration of factor 7 is high. It is trial number 1, trial number 4 and trial number 11 and 50% of the trials in which factor 6 is at low level you will find that factor concentration of factor 7 will be at low level 2 it will be trial number 6 trial number 7 and trial number 9 mm -hmm. this is how the justification is given this is the typical characteristic of plaquette and Berman design this help us to understand that all the possible combinations of all the factors with different factor settings are put together in only 12 trials. So in Plaquette and Berman's design, low and high factor settings are coded as minus 1, plus 1. For example, the coding of a 12 trial design is mentioned in earlier table. Notice that each factor is tested an equal number of times at its low and high setting. So 6 trials are at low level and 6 trials are at high level at for, for, for each factor that we have seen. So there is an equal allocation of factors and balance exists between each pair of factors. For example, of the six trials tested at low settings for factor one, three are tested at each of low and high settings for factor two, as I mentioned or explained you in the earlier table. So this balance, it exists between every pair of factors in the design this equal allocation and balance makes statistically designed experiments complete and very efficient so as compared to one factor at a time and full factorial design this method is at all not time con consuming now uh, let us fill up that table. This is the table that was selected uh, from the Plaquette and Berman design designs, a 12 trial design for the evaluation of 7 factors. Now let us put some real values in this. So these are the trials and these are the factors with settings. So I have replaced 1, 2, 7 with actual names. Factor number 1 is cane molasses, then cotton seed flour, constip liquor, yeast extract, soybean mill, fish mill and FeSO4. Now let us replace the values of minus 1 and plus 1 which was mentioned, which were mentioned in table number 1. 
what are these factor settings for cane molasses it is 10 and 40 for cotton seed flour it is 25 and 100 and so on for feso4 it is 5 and 20 so wherever minus 1 and plus 1 were mentioned now we have replaced it with actual concentration in milligrams per ml so you can see that trial number one or the first experiment will be conducted by using the production medium having composition of 10 milligrams per ml of cane molasses 25 milligrams per ml of cotton seed flour 5 milligrams of corn strip liquor yeast extract 20 milligrams per ml soybean meal 15 milligrams per ml fish meal 15 milligrams per ml feso4 20 milligrams per ml so this will be the composition of the medium for first trial this is how you have to prepare 12 such media with different concentrations so you will have 12 combinations of media so the first medium will be inoculated with the producer organism incubated at defined temperature Incub after incubation period is over the broth is harvested and its antibiotic concentration is measured second experiment third experiment all the 12 experiments are run in a parallel fashion all these different media are inoculated with production medium incubated and after incubation all the broths are harvested and the concentration of antibiotic in all these different experiments which were run independently was is determined this is how the process happens so at the end of all the experiments are run what you get is a response here the response is measured in the form of antibiotic concentration that is in milligrams per liter so this is the response so the response for first trial is 1.21 the response for second trial is 2.95 the concentration of antibiotic produced using a combination of ingredients in 12th trial is 6.55 this is how this is the output of the experiment that is in the form of antibiotic uh, in the last column at the bottom uh, extreme right bottom a uh, 3.8 to 1 is mentioned uh, this is the average value of all these responses so that is for the purpose of next calculation so what do you conclude from this we cannot conclude any from anything from this or otherwise you will say that uh, which is the trial showing highest response will be the optimum uh, will be the optimized medium no the optimization process is not yet over uh, you can see that it is uh, i think it is a 12th trial which is showing the highest response 6.55 this doesn't mean that the medium composition should be this for the maximum production of antibiotic no the objective of plaquette and vermin design is not to find out the composition of the medium the objective of plaquette and vermin design is to find out which is the most significant variable means whether cane molasses is significant cotton seed flour or corn strip liquor and yeast extract and soybean meal and fish meal feso4 out of these seven medium ingredients 
which is the medium ingredient which shows a significant effect on antibiotic synthesis or production means if you change the value of cane molasses from low to high changing these concentrations whether it affects the production of antibiotic or not that is evaluated in this plaquette and berman design so after the statistical analysis is performed will identify or will come to know out of these seven which factors are highly significant means which factors have a significant effect on antibiotic production